So now that we discussed the processes of oogenesis and spermatogenesis, let's briefly focus on the anatomy of the male and the female reproductive organs. And let's begin with the male. Recall that the male gonads are known as the testes. And inside the testes, we have the seminiferal tubules where sperm cells are actually formed. So we have the testes shown in brown. Inside the testes, we have the seminiferal tubules where spermatogenesis actually takes place. Now, notice that the testes are enclosed in this sac-like structure in a flap of skin known as the scrotum. And what the scrotum does is it basically maintains a slightly lower temperature than the body core temperature. For example, if the normal body core temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius, then the temperature of the scrotum is around 35 degrees Celsius. It's 2 Celsius degrees lower than the body core temperature. Now, the reason for that is because the enzymes involved in producing the sperm cells within our testes function effectively and efficiently at a slightly lower temperature. So that's exactly why the scrotum functions to maintain a slightly lower temperature than our body core temperature. Now, once the sperm cells are actually formed in the seminiferal tubules of the testes, those sperm cells travel into a highly convoluted tubule section found next to our testes known as the epididymis. And what the epididymis does is it stores those sperm cells until ejaculation actually takes place for example, during sexual intercourse. And what the epididymis also does it is, is it helps those sperm cells actually mature into mature sperm cells. So let's suppose that during sexual intercourse, this male individual ejaculates. And what that means is the sperm cells will be released from the epididymis and they will travel along the following canal shown in blue. And this canal is known as the vas deferens. Now the vas deferens ultimately uh, empties out into a smaller canal shown in red known as the ejaculatory duct. And the ejaculatory duct is found next to an accessory gland known as the seminal vesicle. Now, what the seminal vesicle does is it releases a fluid substance that contain nutrients such as fructose and proteins that are needed by the sperm cells. So when the sperm cells enter the ejaculatory duct, they mix with that fluid that is produced by the seminal vesicle. And then that fluid travels into our urethra, this canal shown in purple. Now, notice we have this gland along the urethra known as the bulbourethral gland. And we also have another gland known as the prostate gland. Now, these two glands both release a slightly basic solution, a slightly basic substance. The only difference is the bulbourethral gland releases that substance before ejaculation takes place, while the prostate gland releases that substance during ejaculation. And what the function of that slightly basic substance is, is to neutralize the environment found inside the vaginal tract. And that's because the sperm cells must uh, the sperm cells require a slightly basic or neutral solution to actually survive. They cannot survive in an acidic environment. So that's why these two glands produce that type of slightly basic solution and alkaline solution. So we have these three different uh, we have these three different glands and when these glands release that fluid that fluid mixes with the sperm cells and eventually that fluid known as semen basically exits our urethra and exits our penis through the following hole and eventually it enters let's say during sexual intercourse it enters the vaginal cavity so these are the different structures involved in the male reproductive organ. And this is the pathway that is followed by the sperm cell before the sperm cell is ejaculated and after the sperm cell is ejaculated. So they are produced in the seminiferal tubules, then they are stored inside the epididymis and during ejaculation, they travel into the vas deferens and into the ejaculatory duct where they mix with the fluid that 
that comes from the seminal vesicle and then they travel into you into the urethra where they mix with the fluid that is produced by the prostate gland and the bulbo urethral gland and finally uh, that forms the semen and the semen basically exits the penis and eventually enters the vaginal cavity. Now let's move on to the female reproductive organ. So let's focus on the following diagram. So we have the ovary and each female contains two ovaries just like the male contains two testes. So the ovary is the, is the gonad of the female and what that means is this is where oogenesis actually takes place. So this is where we produce our oocytes, our egg cells. Now, when the woman actually reaches puberty, she will begin to undergo the menstrual cycle and every single month, she will basically produce and release a secondary oocyte, our egg cell. And the egg cell will exit the ovary, it will enter the peritoneal cavity, and it will enter the fallopian tube. And along the fallopian tube, we basically have these smooth muscles that undergo the process of peristalsis. And and we also have cilia and together the process of peristalsis and the movement of the cilia moves, propagates that ovum, that egg cell along this fallopian tube and eventually into the uterus. So this is basically the uterus. Now, if the sperm cell is present inside the fallopian tube, so after sexual intercourse, if the sperm cell makes its way into the fallopian tube, eventually it fuses, it combines with that egg cell to produce a zygote. And that zygote begins to move and eventually makes its way into this organ known as the uterus. So the uterus is basically a pear-shaped organ that is lined with a thick layer of smooth muscle. This layer right here that can basically contract during the process of childbirth and it also contains a layer known as the endometrium. So a mucus layer, a mucus membrane known as the endometrium. And during fertilization when the sperm combines with the egg to form the zygote and the zygote makes its way into the uterus the zygote will attach itself, it will implant itself onto the endometrium and it will begin to grow because the endometrium is the structure that provides the nutrients, the minerals and the oxygen that is needed for the growth and development of that zygote. Now notice we also have the cervix which is basically the lower portion of our uterus and it connects our upper portion of the uterus into our vagina and this is is the vagina, it's the vaginal cavity. The function of the vaginal cavity is to basically interact with the penis and it also acts as the birth canal. This is where the child actually moves from the uterus into the vaginal cavity and then out of the body. So. The vagina is an elastic muscular tube that connects the uterus to the outside environment. This is where the sperm enters the woman during sexual intercourse. So essentially after sexual intercourse, once the semen actually is ejaculated into the vagina, it travels via the cervix into the uterus and eventually travels into the fallopian tube. And if it meets with that egg, with that ovum, they fuse to form the zygote and the zygote will move and implant itself onto that endometrium, the lining of our uterus. And the endometrium will basically provide the nutrients, the minerals needed for the growth and development of that zygote. So these are the organs found in the male and the female reproductive system.